8 bit 2's complement. Hopefully, you've already seen this before, um, but if not, um, and so it's a refresher, but if not, this is how we represent integers, for example, in Java using just an 8 bit um, example. So obviously, if we have eight zeros, that's going to give us zero. Okay? If every bit is zero, it's zero. And of course, if we have zero, one, that's one, and that's two. Okay? So what is zero? I've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six ones, and a zero. That's 126. And zero with seven ones is 127. Okay, so 127 is the largest number you can store using 8 bits if you've got it as a signed integer. So then, what is the, what's the number when every bit is true, when every bit is 1? It's not a large number, it's minus 1. Okay, and when all bits are true except the last, it's minus 2. And then when we come down to having all bits false except the first one and the last one, that's minus 127. And then when the first bit is true and everything else is false, that's minus 128, okay? And so the way that Java represents integers, the first bit indicates the sign. If the first bit is 0, it's a positive integer. And if the first bit is 1, if the first bit is true, it's a negative integer. So our hash code function that has the signature public int hash code can return a number that can be negative or positive. To compress that into our table, we can um, change the first bit of the number so that the first bit of the number changes from a positive, from uh, one to a zero. Or, if the first bit is already a zero, we just leave it as a zero. The way that we do that is that we take the number. So, for example, we take data dot hash code. And we end that with 0, 7, and then 7, Fs. So we're ending our result from our hash code with 0, 7, and 7 Fs. This number here is the hex representation of that number, okay? So this is the hex representation of 7, and this is the hex representation of f. Or rather, the hex representation of this is f. So we have our 7, and then we have uh, 7 f's. And so what that does, when we and our number with this hex number is we keep every D 
digit the same except the first. And if the first is one, we set it to zero. And if the first is already zero, we leave it where it is. Okay. So what that means, what that means when we take our hash code number and mod it, sorry, and and it with zero x seven and seven f's. is if we start with, for example, minus one, and we add that with zero, x, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we end up not with positive one, because all we've done is take that first bit that is initially one, and we've made it zero we end up with 214, 748, three, six, four, seven. Okay. If we take minus 10, Then we end it with zero x seven one two three four five six seven. We end up with two one four seven four eight three six three eight. So we're ending up with a very large positive number. So even though we start with a small negative number, we end up with a very large positive number. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the number is. It matters that it's not negative. And so that's why we take our hash code entry and we mod it, and there should be an X there, on 0x7ffffff. Now we've got a positive number, a large positive number if we start with a negative number. And if, it's a, if our hash code is giving us a positive number back, this doesn't change the number at all. So to take our hash code and convert it into something that fits into our table, first what we do is we take our hash code, for example, from a string. We take the number. The first thing we do is this will give us an integer, so we're going to use data.hashcode. And we're going to give it the string that we're working with. Let's say s. We're going to take this hash value and we're going to make sure that it's positive. And then we're going to take this hash value And we're going to mod it on the size of our table. This gives us, we start with an int, it gives us a location in our table where we can add our data. It's a location that's guaranteed to be positive number. And it's a location that's guaranteed to be within the range of the table. It's the 
remainder that's left, left over after we divide the value by the size of the table.